All right, so in our last section, we talked about glycolysis, this process where we took glucose and we broke it into two three carbon molecules. So we split it in half. That's the glycolysis part. We did make some ATP from that too, but that's not a lot. Um, for some organisms, that might be enough um, and they can go on to do other processes like fermentation. But to generate more energy, we need to continue to extract the energy out of these pyruvic acids. So we're gonna talk about this process, the oxidation of pyruvate and the citric acid cycle. Citric acid cycle is also known as the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle, so don't be confused by that. We're gonna examine where this happens. Uh, in eukaryotes, this is occurring in the mitochondria um, and that will be important. We need to talk about the structure. So we'll talk about that. We will then also talk about how pyruvate um, moves into here and enters this cycle. And then in 7.4, we'll finish up the um, last little bit of this. So let's look at the mitochondria, okay? Mitochondria, cute, very cute. Um, has a specific structure for a specific job. So we need to talk about part of the mitochondria called the matrix, okay? Uh, not, not this matrix, of course. The inner portion of the mitochondria is called the mitochondrial matrix. So that's where we're gonna start, but really this membrane between the inner bit and the outer, uh, or the, I guess the middle bit is really important. So let's take a look here at what is really the mitochondrial matrix, less fun, but in here you can see our outer membrane and then we have this inner membrane. Inside there, we have the matrix. That's the area inside of this inner membrane. The next few reactions that we're gonna look at happen in the mitochondrial matrix. So this region is important. The membrane here that separates the uh, inner part, the matrix from the inter uh, membrane space, as it's called, uh, is very critical as well. So we'll examine that in a later section. So we have pyruvate, right? Pyruvate is a three carbon molecule because we took glucose, a six carbon molecule, and we split it in half. Pyruvate is gonna get transported into the mitochondrial matrix. Now, as it goes in, there's a carrier protein for that, there is a reaction that occurs inside of the matrix. And one of the carbons on um, pyruvate actually gets removed. This is going to be uh, brought out as CO2. So this is actually the first place in all of these reactions that we've produced CO2 as a waste product, okay? Um, in the process, no ATP is made, but we have a high energy electron carrier generated. We're making NADH. Okay, these electrons will be important later down the line. So we've took off a bit of energy, we're storing it. We haven't made any ATP yet, but we will. We're left with this, what is called acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA still has two carbons bonded together. It still has energy to give, and we will extract that in a moment. So let's look at our overall diagram. We went through glycolysis. We generated pyruvate. In my example, we moved into the mitochondria, this is a eukaryote, uh, and we chopped off one of those carbons and made acetyl-CoA. Now there is kind of an escape reaction uh, that some organisms do called fermentation. We'll come back to that later. Um, we're following this pathway here through what we call respiration. So we've taken pyruvate, chopped the carbon off it, that generated acetyl-CoA, and we've stored some of that energy in a high energy electron uh, carrier. Now, what happens to this acetyl-CoA? Well, the acetyl-CoA is going to move into the TCA cycle, also called the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, there's three names for it. So let's look at that. These chemical reactions are not important for us. If you take a biochemistry course, they will talk all about these different things. What I want you to see is that we put in this two carbon molecule and as it goes around, it combines with some other ones, but some carbons are going to get cut off here. CO2 is released there and CO2 is released there. Um, we do generate an ATP. This says GTP, ignore that. They're functionally the same. ATP is being made. We produce one ATP, but we also capture energy 
in our NADH and FADH2 high energy electron carriers. This is all happening in the mitochondrial matrix. So we did make one ATP, but, uh, and remember there were actually two pyruvate molecules from that initial uh, uh, glucose molecule, so net it's two, but really we're looking here at the stored energy in these electron carriers. Okay, so the naming. Um, there is citric acid involved in this cycle. Um, so uh, it does get called the citric acid cycle. Uh, the TCA stands for tricarboxylic acid. Um, that's uh, three of something in there that happens there too. Uh, also the Krebs cycle named for Hans Krebs. He was one of the first people to describe this series of reactions. He actually was studying pigeon flight muscles in the 1930s. And um, he was studying these reactions that occurred in here. So this is a closed loop. It keeps regenerating itself. So we keep having to put acetyl-CoA in. Um, to this to, to get this reaction to continue on, but it keeps regenerating itself. But one of the waste products is CO2. So by the end of this, we've cut both the carbons off there essentially and used their energy and expended them as CO2. So at this point, we've fully broken down our glucose. But remember at the beginning, I told you there was gonna be a lot of ATP. So you're asking me, where is all the ATP that you promised us? Well, unfortunately, we've only made two ATP here and two ATP here. We've released CO2, all of the carbons that were in there, right? Six carbons, six CO2s, but we haven't made all that ATP. That's where the last part's gonna come uh, into play here. So we need to deal with all of these high energy electron carriers to get our ATP. Also, you will notice that Oxygen still hasn't played a role. I said oxygen was important. Without oxygen, you would die, right? Um, that is still to come as well. So at our high level, we go glycolysis, pyruvate, into respiration, acetyl-CoA, into the tricarboxylic acid cycle. And that's where we've made it so far. Um, interestingly, in uh, eukaryotes, you need mitochondria for this to occur. There are actually some rare cells that don't have mitochondria, like mature red blood cells. So uh, they can't actually do aerobic respiration. They're going to need to get their energy in other ways. Um, so uh, just a fun side note there, not, not important to the, our course here. Okay, so we're here. We're going to, in the next section, look at this big piece, oxidative phosphorylation. But before we do, let's do some review. Okay, here's a review question. If you were to eat two molecules of glucose, how many molecules of CO2 would be produced when those molecules go through respiration? Go ahead and pause the video, think about that. All right, so we need to think about this. Well, CO2, how did we produce CO2 in here? We chopped carbon molecules off of glucose. So then the question is, how many carbons are in glucose? Glucose is a six carbon sugar. And we have two of those, so we would produce 12 molecules of CO2. Okay, is this number of CO2s important? No, but what I want you to see from this is that the CO2 is the result of cutting the carbons off of glucose. And I'm showing you that through math here. Okay, in summary, our pyruvate moved into the matrix of the mitochondria. So in eukaryotes, this is where we start with the mitochondria. The conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA removes one carbon, producing CO2, and this molecule NADH, high energy electron carrier. Acetyl-CoA then enters the citric acid cycle where it's broken down fully, chopping the remaining two carbons off, releasing them as CO2. One acetyl-CoA produces one ATP and three NADH, one FADH2 and two CO2. Again, not important to memorize these numbers, Think of the scale, right? We didn't produce a lot of ATP there. Instead, we got these high energy electron carriers that will be important in a moment. At this point though, glucose has been fully broken down, but we still haven't generated our ATP. So we need one last step to finish that out. And we'll see that in the next section.